Thor's cooking show today. I'm gonna be on that side of the camera. He's like, he can heckle me. You're allowed to make comments. It's fine. <laughs> oh, heckling. Oh yeah, that's a, that, that is a, that is inviting. I have to say. Throwing tomatoes. Yes. If you throw tomatoes, I might throw ginger back at you. Or uh oh. Something, so, so today we are going to make what some people call Japanese soul food. Very, very delicious, simple recipe for miso soup. And miso soup has a long culture in Japan. Uh, miso actually started in China and then moved over to Japan where it was refined. And it is a very quick uh, soup and broth and can also, miso can be used for many other things like sauces, um, salad dressings. It's really, it's got so much flavor. In fact, it's got something called umami, which um, is often termed the fifth uh, tastes when cooks are, you know, dealing with making dishes. There's something called umami that's like a savory depth of flavor, and sometimes that can be challenging to get when we're cooking vegetarian food in particular. So miso is a wonderful, wonderful way to get that umami into vegetarian food as well as other types of food. So you can use it in anything, but we love it ourselves. In in the Asian countries, oftentimes it's served as a breakfast. So it's a nice way to start your day with this warm, nourishing broth that has many, many wonderful health qualities. So we're gonna just start the water boiling so that we can talk and make it and learn about the health qualities at the same time. So what I've got is three cups of filtered water here and we have a filtration system. Filtering is great, you are gonna boil it so if you don't have filtered water, don't worry about it. And then to make the broth, preferably, you do not have to have this. Like, I, I'm a big believer in keeping things simple, but we always have kombu on hand. Kombu is a type of seaweed that's actually known as the king of seaweeds. So it is, I believe it's the most nutrient-dense seaweed out there. And it's actually um, kelp, which is a type of seaweed. And as you'll see here, my big jar of it because this is wonderful to throw in for broths like miso and very traditionally thrown into miso broth or the yeah just the water and the seaweed and also sometimes they will add in something called bonito flakes which is actually a type of fish we don't do that typically just because rick is a vegetarian and he doesn't eat fish so we do it with the kombu and the beautiful thing about the kombu is you can still get that umami flavor that fish would add as well. Laura, do you have to go to an Asian market to get kombu? I mean, does Wegmans have it? Does Tops have it? I mean, does... I believe that Wegmans actually has it now. Wegmans used, used to only have the sushi nori, but I believe right. I've seen kombu in there now. Cool. It's K-O-M-B-U. Yeah. And it does look a little bit different. You'll see it's very thick. Um, how's that? Can you see it? Yeah, beautifully. Right. And see the white on the outside? Yeah. That's actually salt. So that's from... Now, if I remember correctly, when you've made amazing, you're such an amazing cook, when you've made bean soups, isn't there something that when you put kombu in, it does something? It's supposed to make the beans less gassy. Okay, that's what it is. So more digestible. I couldn't remember. So, yeah, if you put a piece of seaweed in with the beans, in the pot of beans when you're cooking beans, um, it, should, it can help with the gassiness. And it didn't, I didn't remember changing the taste at all. No, it really doesn't. Yeah. It's very subtle. Um, it's, got, it's got some nice flavor to it, but when you're doing a big pot of beans, it's really not going to have that uh, flavor effect. And then also, we'll put it in when we're just making rice in our rice cooker, and then you'll get the health benefits, the minerals um, oh, that's right. that will come out from the seaweed right into uh, the rice. And I believe that's a big macrobiotic tip. So cool. Oh, yeah, they're big on the seaweed. Yeah, yeah it's very yeah. big. And with the rice, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take, um, I'll probably put two pieces in here. And there's no rule to this. A lot of times people just put one piece in. I'm just going to put it right into the pot, pour my three cups of water in, and then we're going to get it on the stove so we can boil it. All right. Let's see that water was a little warm. I took it out of the tea kettle. Speed things up a little bit, and then we're gonna pop it on the stove here, and then we'll talk and prepare the rest of it, which is not a lot of prep. So, again, kombu, king of seaweeds, and it is high in many minerals, and actually a very good source of iodine. So if you're caring for thyroid health, 
and that is something that you need, this is a very high source of iodine. In fact, much higher than the other seaweeds even. So That's awesome. All right. So as a topper, we're going to have our scallion here. So we'll slice that up. And then I also have some tofu here. And traditionally, if you go to Japanese restaurants, oftentimes the meal is started with miso soup. And there's little cubes of tofu in it. So that's the tofu there. So I'm gonna do that first, just because I put the tofu into the broth while it's boiling, because tofu is actually a very cold type of food. It's a great source of protein. Again, miso is made out of soybeans, as is tofu. Now, Laura, is the tofu, because you know, you know yourself, you go to the market, you have cooked, you already cooked tofu. Is this raw tofu, uncooked tofu yes. that you're using? Okay. This is uncooked tofu. Okay, because you know, it could be confusing and stuff. Yeah, so. yep, and I have firm tofu here. Sometimes traditionally they'll use the soft tofu, which is delightful, especially if you go to a restaurant. There's certain restaurants in New York City, um, as well as of course in Asia, where they make homemade tofu right there in house. It's unbelievable, mm -hmm. it's just so different. So here's my block of tofu. Tofu is not that scary, although some people are scared of it. Yeah, <laughs> it is interesting. I hear that a lot in the clinic. People like, I don't know, I never know what to do with tofu. Yeah, so it's a great I was like, protein. anything, you can, it, it soaks up anything you use it with, so. Yeah, a wonderful protein source for um, vegetarians and vegans. And you can see I'm cubing it up here in small cubes to just pop top in, or pop it in the broth. So I'm gonna do that first, just to warm it up. And you don't need a lot of it. A little bit of a, now if you're making a hearty soup like you want to make this into the main course of your meal rather than just the starter you could add in all sorts of things to the broth you could add in vegetables you could add in meat you could add in some seafood and really make this into a soup and now somebody could just pop a couple of shrimp in there right I mean if you do eat fish or right sure, okay definitely okay. definitely for sure cool all right and then we're gonna just get the scallion ready typically I cut off the two inches and then I keep it in my little, I showed you guys this before. And Thank you, Auntie. She, yeah. Auntie showed Laura that. She's been doing it ever since. It's like third year, I think now. Yeah, we've got a whole box of them going outside. And then we're just gonna slice this up. This is just gonna be a topper. Now, miso soup actually is used in China as a healing soup. When someone feels like they're getting a cold or they have some kind of germ coming on, then they'll take it and they'll make it with a scallion, which is very good for fighting off germs. Again, we talked about the Allium family that has some wonderful anti-viral, uh, antibacterial effects, as well as opening up the sinuses because it's a little bit spicy. I like to get the grains in there too because it adds some nice color. And then if you, you were feeling sick, I might add some ginger in too. Or if you felt like your stomach needs a little more nourishing, add some ginger in too. I'm not gonna do that today. It's interesting, but, there's a consistency here. We did that with the kanji. Remember when you did your kanji yeah. presentation, it was had garlic and uh, ginger in it too, right? Right, exactly. So um, if you were gonna do the ginger, I would add it into the broth. I'm just gonna take a peek at my broth. It's getting going, it's getting rolling, so we'll get moving here. This is the miso, and I'm gonna say this about the miso and actually the tofu because they're both made from soy. If you're getting soy products, especially in the US, the US made, make sure you get organic because almost all the soy in the US, and might even be all of it at this point, is genetically modified. So wow. making sure that you get organic is really important. This is a white miso. There's all different types of miso. Um, miso has a long, beautiful history of being made in different ways, different areas of the um, country. This one is a white miso. White miso is a lighter miso. Although I was saying to Rick, this is a darker white miso than I'm used to seeing. Yeah, you look at and, it, usually it's like almost a, uh, a dirty blonde appearance right, to it, right? Exactly. Kind of like, yeah. And it's gotten so popular, white miso is actually making its brand of miso, which is very cool. I have not tried it yet, so I'm looking forward to trying that. So the lighter the miso is, typically the mellower the taste is. Mm -hmm. So if you have red miso, it'll be a stronger flavor. Um, it'll have a, a more kind of pungent taste. So I would say that white miso is the gateway miso. So if you're just trying yeah. it, then you want to start with the white miso so it's not as intense a flavor. The white miso isn't aged as long as the darker miso. And it is not quite as salty. If you were comparing misos, you might almost say that this is sweet, sweeter. 
So, and for those who don't know now about miso, red doesn't mean spicy or anything, Laura, right? On no, the color of miso. Aged okay. And more fermented. I'm just trying to think of questions I've been asking the clinic, you know. Sure. So. so the measurement is about one tablespoon of miso to one cup of water. Sometimes you want a little bit less. I tend to like, you know, about a little less than a tablespoon per cup. You can always add more, so start with less. So typically we'll make um, a four cup serving size for our family, and I'll use three tablespoons of miso. Um, so play with it and see what you think. All right, and the misos can change in how salty, salty they are. So start with a little less and then the more. So you're gonna see me, what I'm doing here is I'm going to put this into a little bowl here because you do not want to put it right into the boiling water because that will kill off mm. one of the wonderful benefits of miso. Miso is also chock full of vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. The dogs are obviously soft for there was a squirrel. <laughs> there was a squirrel or a, a butterfly going by. That's Who right, knows? Right. Yeah. So miso has some wonderful vitamins, minerals, as well as something called probiotics or good bacteria. Uh -huh. I some yeah. A wonderful way to get into your, your probiotics. So people often say to me, "Well, I want to help build my gut flora, my good bacteria, but I can't eat dairy, so I can't do yogurt." Perfect. And they'll talk about different. Things like, oh, they don't like sauerkraut, they don't like kimchi. So miso is usually a universal flavor that people like. It's very just like this salty, earthy, briny flavor. So three tablespoons going in, and we're going to put it in this little vessel so that we can just add some of the warm broth in there. I've turned down the broth, and it's just kind of hanging out, simmering a little bit. You could either add just warm water from the tap into this, you know, or you could take a little bit of broth. I usually just take a little broth, it's there anyway, and put it in. So I've turned down the boiling. I'm gonna add some broth in here. And then one of the other nice things about doing this way, doing it this way, of course the most important thing is that we keep the probiotic effect, but the other piece of it is that it helps you dissolve the miso in the water, so it's not, you're not chasing it around the pot trying to get the clumps out. So I don't know if you can see this. It doesn't look very attractive right now. Oh, that's good that you showed that, yeah. Can you, but, come, can you show it again, I'm sorry. Oh, sure. Like right, right around the center of the, that's perfect, great, thank you. So I've got that, yeah. I'm just gonna take a whisk, you do it with a fork, and I'm just gonna dissolve it in there. Mash it up in there, and then we'll, we've got the soup turned down, Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> I remember we were uh, at a place where there were a lot of Japanese uh, tourists in the area, and the breakfast bar of the place had a like a whole miso right, uh, right and white and brown rice section because of yes. to, and for breakfast it was and there was the eggs yes. and home fries and bacon somewhere else. But the other the, the one aisle had all for a lot of the Japanese folks were going into the uh, getting miso for breakfast. I yeah. never I knew about the kanji for breakfast, didn't know miso. Yeah, so. we were so excited. <laughs> I know we were. <laughs> so I mixed this up into a slurry, and now we can put it in. So I'll just show you this. It's just almost like a slurry. If you go to the center, that's perfect. That's All perfect. Right. Yep. So now we're gonna pop this in. I'm actually just gonna bring this right over here, and we'll bring that in there. What did I do with my little tools? And that's all she wrote. We put it in there, let's give it a stir. You could take the combo out, yeah, if you want to, take the combo out of the broth and slice it up and eat that as well. Some people don't care for that. I always do it. Yeah, you do. There's actually wonderful fiber in combo as well. And that means my family does it all the time too. That's exactly right. <laughs> so I'm just mixing this up some. And then I'm going to put some in a bowl. And you can see the kombu, the kombu grow, grows a little bit. I don't know if you can see that very well, but. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. yeah and it becomes pliable and They're rehydrated, so you can right? Easily uh, slice it up. So our sea vegetables are the most abundant vegetables in the world. So we need to start thinking about ways to incorporate Definitely. them in because they're so healthy and harvestable. So I was putting some in here. Got some little balls, lots of tofu floating around in there. 
And then I'm just going to top it with some scallion. Very simple. Very, very simple. But very tasty. Yeah. And there you have it. So you're getting in your probiotics. You're getting in your vitamins. And it tastes delicious. Look how beautiful that is. Can you see it? Perfect. There you go. Yeah. Tilt, All tilt right. It. Yeah, that's good. And then here's one last tip. When you're in a Japanese restaurant traditionally, you do not use a spoon when you eat your miso soup. You drink it out of the bowl. So here's to you. Cheers. I'm going to sip some up here. It's delicious. Yum, yum. I can taste the scallion in there. And um, when you finish, so because you're sipping it, so you, you got the little bits and pieces in there, you would take your chopsticks and just bring the bowl to your mouth. And when you're sipping it, you bring the bowl to your mouth, of course. And then you bring the bowl to your mouth and just scoop your little goodness in there, your little tofu and your little scallion. All right. And so uh, just, just the last part of that, our children, when they were younger, they couldn't manage that. So Laura put a little rice in their uh, miso so then they could finish everything because they could eat yes. rice. And now that's the only way they <laughs> they always that's add terrible. rice to their miso now. Yes, so, yeah. yeah. And that, that they love that. Children love that. If you put a little scoop of rice in there, it becomes like a little porridge for them. So yep. you can enjoy that too. That was awesome. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Cool. I'm hitting finish.